Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, um, I hope you're all doing well. Okay, all right, so the next program in chapter five is future value. All right, so suppose you have a certain amount of money in a savings account that earns compound monthly interest, and you want to calculate the amount that you will have after a specific, um, uh, after a specific number of months. The formula is as follows. So F is equal to P times one plus I raised to the power T. Now this is exponent T, but I couldn't, you know, I couldn't find a way to, you know, show that here. So I had to write raised to the power T. It's basically one plus I all in parentheses raised to the power T. Let me just show you the question here in the book. I copied and pasted here. So this is the formula. <clears throat> okay, so you can see that this is um, a T here. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Okay. So this is the formula. The terms in the formula F, F is the future value of the account after the specified time period. P is the present value of the account. I is the monthly interest rate. T is the number of months. Okay. <clears throat> so write a program that prompts the user to enter the account's pre present value, monthly interest rate, and the number of months that the money will be left in the account. The program should pass these values to a function that returns the future value of the account. Uh, of the account after the specified number of months. The program should display the account's future value. <clears throat> All right, so we've been given a formula over here, and we are to create a function um, and, and provide to the function as arguments the present value of the account, the account's monthly interest rate, and the number of months, I believe. So we're to end, um, so, so it's going to prompt, we're going to ask the user to enter the account's present value, the monthly interest rate, and the number of months. And then we're going to use a function to basically uh, calculate the future value and then return it. Okay, so let's let's start. <coughs> Sorry. So I have this, you know, you know, just just I don't know what what, what just happened, but I I'm, anyway, sorry about that. <coughs> All right, so over here it says we should write a program that prompts the user to enter their account presence value. Okay, so we are going to prompt the user to enter their account presence value, monthly interest rate. <clears throat> monthly interest rate and the number of months. So since chapter five is all about functions, let's create a function that's that we're going to that, uh, basically let's create a function that's going to prompt the user to enter uh, enter uh, details. We can create individual functions to, for example, to ask the user to enter the present value. We can create another function to ask the user to enter the monthly interest rate, or we can create another function to um, ask the user to enter number of months that the money will be left in the account. Another thing we can do is, instead of actually ask, uh, creating separate functions for, to ask, ask individual item or be individual values, we can create one function that's going to ask all three. And then in Python, we can return all three out of the function. Okay, so, so let's see how that's, that's done. Let, let's, let's do it that way instead. So I'm going to define a function, and then I'm going to call it ask for details. Okay, ask for details. Now, ask for details is not going to accept in any argument, so I'm, I'm going to not define any parameters over here in the parentheses, right? <clears throat> and so, what ask for details is going to do for the well, details I spelled it wrong. And so, what ask for details is going to do the very first time is going to I'm going to use the input function to prompt or ask the user to enter the present value first. Okay, let's first, first ask for the present value. So I'm going to use the input function to ask for the user that, to, yeah, to, to ask the user that. So I'm going to ask, please enter the present value, right? <clears throat> and so the input function is going to display this string here to the user. It's also going to allow the user to enter something or basically respond Okay, so basically it's going to pop up some kind of text box and allow the user to also enter a response. Now, whatever response the user types here in, in that, you know, kind of text box is going to be returned as a string. Even if the user types in a number, that response, that number is going to be returned as a string. That's how the input function works by default. Everything that the user types into the input, uh, input text box you know, that pops up, okay, is returned as a string. But we are asking for the present value, okay? Meaning we are asking for numeric data, okay? So th this is going to be a num numeric data. It could be monetary, a monetary amount, like a decimal, like let's say twenty-five point two dollars or something. 
And so we need to convert the string that is returned by default by the input function. In this case, we want to convert, we need to convert it to a float because we can't use strings in calculation. Uh, we can't use strings the way we want to use it in this program. We need a number, right? We need a float. And so I'm going to call the float float function. And I'm going to surround everything that a user has typed, okay? Meaning the input function. Basically, I'm, I'm surrounding the input function. Everything that a user has typed, I'm surrounding it with parentheses using the float function. And this float function is basically going to convert everything that a user has typed into a float. And once once everything the user has been typed, sorry, once everything the user has typed has been converted to a float, and returned. Um, we need a place to start. Okay, so I'm going to basically create a, another variable. Or basically, a, well, this is the first variable. <laughs> I'm going to create a, a variable in the ask for details function that's going to store the presence value. All right, so I'm going to create a variable here called presence value. Sorry, that's going to store whatever the user is going to type. Okay, convert it, convert it to a float. All right. And then the next thing I want to do is also ask for the ask the user to enter the monthly interest rate. After the present value, I'm asking for the monthly interest rate. So I'm basically going to do the same thing. Copy this, paste this, change this to monthly interest rate. Right? Monthly interest rate. And and tell the user to please enter the monthly interest rate. So again, the monthly interest rate, right, um, is going to be, so let's see. So we, we can design it in such a way that, okay, we can design it in such a way that the user enters exactly, if it's 2%, right? I'm just giving an example. If we, we, if we design it in such a way that, you know, we, the user types in, let's say, 2, as in uh, two, 2 to stand for 2%, you know, before we divided ourselves, we, we, we so basically we have the option to allow the user to type in the decimal value. So if it's two percent, we can give the user the option to type in zero point zero two for two percent, or we can give the user the option. We can make it easy for the user to type in just two, and then we can go ahead and divide two ourselves uh, by a hundred to get the two percent. I think we should do it that way instead. It makes the program much more flexible. So we ask the user to please enter the monthly interest rate. Now the monthly interest rate, okay, it can be. It can be a floating point value. It can be a decimal. It can be 2.5 or 2.7. And so, again, we also have to convert it to a float, which we are doing. We are storing it here. But, like I said, let's just allow the user to type in. Either it's, if it's 2%, we should allow, um, the user should type in 2. If it's 5%, the user, the user should type in 5. And so, over here, we are going to um, accept that. And then we are going to divide by 100. Before that, let me just fix this here. We can see over I don't know if you can see it, but there's a line here. And you can see that I've exceeded this line here. And this line is simply a guideline for me not to exceed 80 characters on a line. Okay, it's a Python standard not to exceed 80 characters on a line. So this is a guideline for me not to exceed 80 characters on a line. And so I need to, I'm going to go ahead and break this line into two. It's going to be the same line, but I'm breaking it into two. Now, before you break any line in, into two in Python, um, you, have to, you have to type in the backslash. Okay, but then before I do that, um, I mentioned I'm going to break it into two, so I'm going to close the string here, okay, and then concatenate it with the with with the beginning of the string, okay, and concatenate it with the beginning of the string here, like this. So let, let me undo it and do it again. I'm breaking the string here. I'm going to concatenate it with the beginning of the string, right? So now I'm just joining these two strings, but but because I've you know broken them into two, I can also break this line into two. Now the strings have been broken into two, okay, so I can break them into two. Before you break any line into two in Python, you have to type in the backslash. So I'm going to type in the backslash and hit enter. Okay, so now I have them on two, on two lines, but it's, it's pretty much the same line. But now I don't have this, I don't have it exceeding this line over here. All right, so once the user types in the monthly interest rate, let's go ahead and divide whatever the user has typed by 100, okay? and store the result back in monthly interest rate. Because if the user types in two for 2%, right, in, in order for us to get the actual 2% value, we have to divide two by 100, which gives us 0 0.02, okay? And 0 0.02 is what we're going to use to represent 2% in the calculation itself. And so, once we have the monthly interest rate, I'm going to 
divide monthly interest rate, okay? Monthly interest rate, I'm going to divide it, okay, by 100. And I'm going to store the result back in monthly interest rate. Like this, so monthly interest rate is going to be equal to what's already stored in month monthly interest rate, divided by 100. So if days are typed in two, we are taking two, dividing it by 100, storing the result, which is 0 0.02, back in monthly interest rate here. And then now we'll have our decimal value, okay, for, for the monthly interest rate. Now this can also be written in a shortcut form. It's this, this same statement can be written, written this way. We can, we can write, write it this way. Monthly interest rate, okay, divided equals. Oh, oh, sorry, one second. Did I use the backslash for, for the division? I'm sorry, it's a uh, division this way, okay? I don't know if I did, let me just undo it and see. I did, I did. No, I did it right here, I'm sorry. Uh, no, th this is fine, I did, it, I did it the correct way. I think I used backslash somewhere. Um, anyway, I, I think I'm confusing myself. This is the right thing, okay, division. All right, so this can be written as, in a shortcut for version as, monthly interest rate division, okay, or divided, divided equals. In other words, we are dividing monthly interest rate, okay, by 100. Or monthly interest rate is being divided by 100. Okay, you can think of it that's what, that way. All right. So now we'll have the monthly interest rate. The, la the last thing I want us to do is to ask for the number of months that the money will be left in the account. All right, so it's going to be the same thing, right? Same idea. I'm going to copy this line here. But now we're asking for the number of months. Please enter the number of months. Money will be left. Okay, so money will be left in the account. Let me delete, delete this. And again, we are exceeding this line here. So I'm going to go ahead and break it into two. I'm going to close the string, concatenate it with the beginning of the string, break this into two, but before I break it, before you break in the line in Python, you have to type in the backslash and hit enter. All right, so please enter the number of months. Okay, the money will be left in the account. Okay, so I messed up here. Let me fix it. So you can see that. So just to show you again here, I'm going to break it somewhere on here. Close the string, concatenate it with the beginning of the string. Before I break any line, I type in the backslash, hit enter. All right, we are asking for the number of months, okay, the money will be left in the account. The user is going to type in the number of months. It's going to be an integer, right? It's going to be the two months or five months or six months or eight months, right? But we said the input function always returns a string. But we don't need a string. We need a number because we can't use strings in, in calculations. And so instead of converting it to a float, after, after the user has typed in whatever, whatever number, which is being returned as a string, we need to convert it to a, an integer, not a float. So I'm going to call the, or use the int function rather to convert everything that the user has typed into an integer and store it in number of month, the number of month variable, number of month here. Okay, so, and so number of month is going to be equal to whatever the user has typed converted to an integer, okay? And so now the reason why I did it this way is because now we can return all three values. Using, using a function in Python. Now we have the present value, you have the monthly interest rate, which is basically this, you know, which finally becomes this value, right? We divide by 100, whatever the user types. And then we have the number of month. In Python, we can just return all three. We can say return present value, monthly interest rate, and then number of months. All right, and then now we're done with this function. Okay, so now we, we can return these values this way. But when we are receiving these values, okay, when, when we call this function and it's returning these values, we have to receive it in the same order. We have to have a variable that's going to store the present value, have a variable that's going to store the monthly interest rate, and have a variable that's going to store number of months. These values are returned in, the, in this order. And so when you're receiving the values, you also have to have three va variables that are, that are going to receive the va the, these values in the same order. So 
the first variable you put um, or you 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 have to accept these values is going to accept the present value. The second value variable is going to accept the monthly interest rate, and the third variable is going to st store the number number of months. So it's respective, right? So now we're returning these values here. We're done with the ask for details function.